damn fucking doll. Hello Chucky fans, thanks so much for clicking on this video. My name is Chucky Boy. Episode 4 of the Chucky TV series has landed online titled Just Let Go. Things in the Chucky universe continue to get spicier and spicier with this being another solid episode. Especially now that we know the next episode will for sure bring in past characters from other Chucky movies. So episode 4 was really the calm before the storm and well, the storm is a brewing. What I'm going to do here for you guys is giving you my episode 4 breakdown of the Chucky TV series, pointing out Easter eggs you might have missed to the larger Chucky universe because there was quite a few here. But as always, this is a cult effort. You Chucky heads out there need to be leaving me your opinion down below of what you thought of this episode. Hopefully the comments aren't turned off like YouTube loves to do with these breakdowns, especially because I love hearing from you guys out there because you guys correct me on some stuff I get wrong here and there and also bring new theories to my attention that I had no idea about. Like one thing you guys brought up about the last episode that I completely forgot about but is true is there is a bit of a continuity error concerning Chucky's lineage because if you remember, in Seed of Chucky, Chucky mentions to his son Glenn that it's a family tradition for generations upon generations that they are killers. And well, the little backstory that we got in the last episode, even though I did like it and thought it was creepy, that isn't really the generation of killers I thought he was talking about. We'll have to wait and see as the season continues on if maybe Chucky gets adopted later on with a family of killers or that is just one of the situations where it's a bit of an error and we just have to let it go. But enough about the past, let's talk about the current present with episode four. Just my general thoughts before we go to the shot by shot breakdown. Again, I thought it was another really solid episode. If you stick around to the end of the episode, you get a little behind the scenes of how they made episode four and Don Mancini, the creator, mentions that this was was an homage to Halloween 2 from 1981, which is my personal favorite Halloween sequel. So I love the atmosphere of it all, especially the lighting going down in this episode. Like it was really beautiful to look at. Not to mention this episode went ahead and revealed a whole new look for Chucky continuing to prove that Funko, you better be on them Funko Pops. I need one with the Hello Kitty mask. And now Two-Face melted Chucky, please. All right, but now going shot by shot into the episode, the opening here, like I said, some amazing lighting effects and cinematography going on in episode four. As we come to find out that this episode takes place the exact same night of episode three. Again, more of that Halloween 2 connection where that movie took place the exact same night of its predecessor. And man, has a hospital never looked as creepy. Look at all those red lights. Chucky's got red lights too, y'all. But we're following Jake Wheeler here who has made it to the hospital hospital curious to find out what damage has Chucky done to the lives of people in Hackensack expecting Lexi to be dead and heck maybe even half of his friends. We get to see the reaction of Oliver's parents being told his son is dead. Jake's still finding a lot of his classmates still alive just badly injured from the fire. His cousin being one of the survivors. Jake looking the most happiest when he finds out Devin is completely unharmed and safe. All leading to him finally finding out that Lexi actually did not perish at the hands of Chucky and she is still alive. Alive. This is the conversation I had been waiting to see since episode 3. What exactly is Lexi gonna say about Jake's doll? And it all comes full forward. Jake fully admits to the fact that he sent Chucky to kill Lexi and her obviously having a really bad reaction to that realizes, well, I can't really go around telling people that Jake's doll is alive and is after me because they know how that sounds and they do not want to spend a night at the loony bin. And look, as much as I hate Lexi and the show is really taking those baby steps for us to like her, I'm kind of on her side here if I find out, wait, you sent a doll to kill me and now you want me to be nice to you? Nah, son. From there, we cut to Devin having a conversation with his mom, the detective. Of course, her being very relieved that her son is alive and in perfect health, but is still gonna question him about Jake and if he was anywhere near the party, including his Chucky doll. It's really interesting how Devin's mom continues to bring up the Chucky doll, almost like she knows it's connected to a lot of these murders. I don't fully believe that Devin's mom knows that the Chucky doll is alive, but she definitely has her suspicions that whenever Jake and that Chucky doll are around, good things do not happen. But before we cut to this episode's title card, we get the little bombshell where the police do know Oliver did not die in the fire accidentally being burned alive. No, he was stabbed to death as the autopsy revealed that was the cause of death. I was actually not expecting this to happen. I fully believe the episode was just gonna breeze it over and say Oliver died in the fire, but I'm liking that they actually went ahead and took a realistic approach and showed that obviously Oliver's body would have a lot of stab wounds and loss of blood after they found his burnt up carcass. This also kind of being the final nail in the coffin of that is no accident. There is a murderer out there and Devin's mom believes it is Jake. Bringing us to the great title card sequence that we get here of a bunch 
bunch of medical supplies bringing up the words Chucky. Really love this because although this is paying homage to Halloween 2 in that hospital scene, this title card still gives me the vibes of Cult of Chucky, a sequel I very much enjoyed. From the title card, we cut to Lexi having a conversation with her parents where she is concerned for her sister because obviously she does love her even if she has a weird way of showing it. Even her parents reacting back to that of, oh, you finally show some love to your sister? And honestly, everything the parents said to Lexi in this conversation, I was fully on their side. From their perspective, yeah, they do have a brat of a daughter that really needed to be taught a lesson, especially now that they know how she dressed up as Jake's dead father for Halloween. I was agreeing with every word they were throwing at Lexi here from their perspective, not knowing that Chucky really is alive. Now, when we cut back to Jake, who was sitting around in the hospital, most likely waiting for his guardian parents and Junior, a little pink soccer ball rolls up and hits Jake on the leg. Now, Don Mancini mentioned in the making of this episode that this is sort of an homage to The Shining and how things like that were happening in that film, but I definitely think that there is something else going on here with that soccer ball and the mom who picks it up, which we'll get to in a sec. But continuing on here, as Devin informs Jake that Oliver actually died of stab wounds, Jake knowing very well that it was Chucky who did it, we cut back to the parents of all these teenagers who are just now at a boiling point. And again, even though these are all new characters and us as longtime fans of Chucky are not attached to them fully yet, I was completely glued to the screen with this three-way dynamic that was happening. There's a lot to digest in this scene. For one, you almost have the aunt of Jake Bree wanting to admit this weird affair or secret that she's having from her husband as she points, my son almost died today. It kind of really puts your things in perspective, but her husband not really paying attention and just being more angry with the coffee machine. Then when they finally confront Lex, Lexi's parents and the conversation they're having back and forth where they are both guilty parents of one being neglectful parents like Lexi's parents are who just let Lexi get away with anything and be a spoiled brat but at the same time calling out Junior's parents for pressuring him a little too hard in something he obviously isn't interested in. I thought the detective's mom Devin was going to be the innocent one out but then they point out the fact that she's guilty as well for letting her son be part of this true crime podcast where a kid his age should not be that fascinated with the crime going on in Hackensack and we know something fishy's going on with Devin because he's recording conversations. It really was the writing in this episode that I thought was really well done to kind of bring up this dynamic. But this argument between parents ends when Devin mom feels the best way to defuse the situation is to let them know, look, a kid was murdered today and your kids could either be the suspects or next. Real classy, Devin's mom. Lexi finally having some time to cool down and realize that Jake helping her out is her only option to go against Chucky decide to go back to her half-burnt house to try and see if his remains are there. Now it is worth pointing out as Lexi and Jake make their way to the house which I assume must be somehow in walking distance because these kids are not old enough to drive and they just made it to the house on foot. Still I can't imagine Lexi's house is that close because as they're going on to inspect the burnt house we cut back to Junior and his parents where one Junior cannot admit to the fact that he does not want to be like his father and do cross country but also that they're about to put Junior to sleep so that they can put a camera in his mouth to check on the status of his lungs. And while Junior is dozing off away, we do get to see a little shadow of Chucky running in the hospital. And as a Chucky fan, that should start sending off alarms in your head because it seems now that we for sure have multiple Chucky dolls running about. Because at the same time as this is happening and a Chucky doll is running in the hospital, a Chucky doll that is half burnt is at Lexi's home where Jake and Lexi are inspecting it. It feels like there's probably other moments in the pre previous episodes where this could have been the case of multiple Chucky dolls running about but this one feels like the most clear indication of multiple Chucky dolls and for those of you who have not kept up with the series in the most recent movie Cult of Chucky it was a twist reveal in that movie that Chucky has learned a new voodoo spell where he now has the ability to split his soul into multiple dolls even more than one human body if he pleases. So now that Junior is asleep in the hospital we follow more of Lexi and Jake at her burnt house House, trying to find Chucky's remains where again we have really great writing where the characters kind of explode on each other where Lexi just decides to really hammer at Jake and be like why would you send a Chucky doll to kill me I don't understand I'm such a perfect little angel and Jake being like really are you that dense you dressed up like my dead dad I'm not trying to kill everybody I just wanted to kill you and I thought it was a real powerful moment between the characters especially when Lexi then goes ahead and falls off the rail and Jake has to save her Finally revealing to us a brand new look of Chucky that I gotta say, 
is a little weird looking at first, but as someone who endlessly loves that Chucky's look gets changed here and there from movie to movie, I love that this is again another addition to those Chucky faces where we're calling this one obviously the Two-Face Chucky, because the man literally looks like the Batman villain Two-Face. But as Two-Face Chucky is wanting to convince Jake to go ahead and kill Lexi off, we really get the turning point that Jake is not going to become a killer and that Lexi is basically redeemed as a character and will probably turn good after all this trauma. Just let go. One less little vicious Karen on training wheels. It was kind of funny though seeing Chucky trying to jump and get to Lexi like she's some sort of pinata. Still this fight between Jake, Lexi, and Chucky he does not last very long because a detective that we saw in episode two shows up to the house wanting to find Chucky to bring it back to Lexi's younger sister Caroline as her parents requested. But as these characters are being driven back to the hospital, we cut back to Devin who is wanting to do some research on Chucky, trying to get down to the bottom of who is Charles Lee Ray. And we get a lot of little Easter eggs as he's Google searching him. Some really cool ones, some that are just straight up funny. Like one, we do get a screen grab from Bride of Chucky where we have Tiffany Valentine, AKA Jennifer Tilly's character. I'm just gonna pretend maybe that was her MySpace profile picture. We have Nika, which has sort of become one of the newer main protagonists in the series, who as we know of right now is currently possessed by Charles Lee Ray Chucky, and they have her marked as escaped from the psychiatric hospital from Cult of Chucky. But the other funny related Google searches we have here is like how to fix your good guy doll, iconic toys from the past, why are good guy dolls so pricey, all really funny things that you would probably actually see in related searches in real life compared to good guy dolls. Through Devin's research though, he does manage to find an article that gives us yet another flashback scene to a much older version of Chucky, where after becoming an orphan since his parents died, he ends up at a boy's home where we see teenage Charles Lee Ray reading Peter Pan to the kids of this home. And there's a lot of things you could digest here with Charles Lee Ray reading Peter Pan. One, we get to see a little bit more backstory of Chucky actually wanting to be an influence on other people and Ray them to be killers as that's obviously what he was trying to do with these little group of kids but also the story he chose Peter Pan a book about a character that's never supposed to age and just kind of lead this cult of lost boys is basically what Chucky is now as the killer doll the man never ages and now we see him in the TV show trying to turn Jake into a killer continuing with this flashback scene we do see Charles Lee Ray encounter the janitor of this boy's home who gets mad at him for tracking some mud in the area he just cleaned where we get a look at some red adidas shoes with white stripes very much resembling the same shoes that Chucky would later wear in the good guy doll form. I thought that was just a fun little easter egg. But now that this janitor has wronged Chucky, he has made it his mission to get rid of him, turning it into a game with the children of this home saying that they found Captain Hook. Two of the kids running off because this is not what they signed up for, but one of the kids does decide to tag along and stick with Chucky here, proving that Chucky can turn one or two people into a sadistic killer like him. But now that the cop has returned to the hospital with Lexi and Jake, we do see Lexi and Jake being separated. One, Jake going off with Devin's mom to be questioned about everything going on, while Lexi continues off to try and find Chucky before he gets to her sister, only to encounter Devin, who wants to go ahead and inform Lexi of Chucky's background. But it was here as the characters are moving to a room to discuss that background of Chucky that we see again the mom who has the pink soccer ball who is holding a child with blue overalls and striped colored shirt very much resembling a good guy doll that cannot be a coincidence either that is a huge misdirect from the show that is meant to make people like me overanalyze the situation or this lady is up to something like we were mentioning there is most likely two Chucky dolls now in the hospital one that was at the burnt house at Lexi that has now been brought to the hospital and the other one that was already running around the hospital keeping an eye on other characters I might be reaching here but this character right here that we see with the mom and the baby could actually be the people who brought the Chucky doll to the hospital and whether this is Tiffany, Glenn, Glenda who has taken over the body of this mom and is walking around with another Chucky doll who knows, but I feel like it has to mean something. But now with only minutes left in this episode, we still have to fill our quota of one dead body per episode, and we have here Two-Face Chucky ready to go to work on this douchebag detective. Chucky then here sees an opportunity where he could take a scalpel and throw it at this detective's back, paralyzing him and throwing him back where he lands even deeper 
on the knife. An absolutely unsettling thing to happen, even more unsettling is just the little noises Chucky is making right before he takes care of this guy. Also love the well-balanced humor they threw in here with Chucky being menacing and funny. Sorry, asshole, but I just couldn't take it for one more second. I couldn't stand your fucking face. I don't know. Maybe I'm just projecting. As someone who does not like needles very much, I thought it was really creepy that he just grabbed a bunch of used ones and fed this guy with a bunch of different medicines. Him calling it a cocktail. Now again, it did look a little silly with Chucky doing all that stabbing, but sometimes it's not even looking like the actual needles are piercing through this character's body. That's just some of the animatronic work that we have to deal with, but everything surrounding this moment is still absolutely beautiful. Finally killing off this cop character and cutting to the final parts of this flashback where we see Chucky is about to go on the run as he does not want to be caught for the death of the janitor. Not before saying goodbye to one of his new students here where he gives him a box of a severed hand really reminding me of the end of Seed of Chucky whenever Chucky decided to gift Glenn a severed hand of Chucky and send it off to him. But that wasn't even the bombshell easter egg that we got here because very quickly we finally know the name of this character and it is Andy Caputo. And just like Charles Lee Ray goes by the name Chucky, I'm assuming Andy Caputo is not what this guy goes by and instead eventually goes by the name Eddie Caputo, which everyone should know as the partner of Charles Lee Ray in the very beginning of the first Child's Play, where when Charles Lee Ray is running away from Detective Mike Norris, Eddie Caputo goes ahead and leaves Chucky for dead. Eventually breaking that childhood friendship that we just witnessed where Chucky gets his revenge and kills him off. That is something I love that the show introduced is just showing how that relationship started, where they met, but not really going too far and deep into it where it ruins some of the stuff we know about Chucky. I like now knowing how he met Eddie Caputo, bringing us now back to the present where Chucky wants some recognition for his work where he pulls the plug on Coraline's machine that would obviously send a frenzy to her room all because he wants everyone to know that this detective is now dead in the hospital and someone did it. Chucky knowing that no one would believe these teenagers takes it a step further, revealing himself for the very first time to Devin and wow, what a way to end an episode. That was absolutely fantastic. I don't know about you guys, but I was cheering with a smile, actually clapping like, yeah, Chucky. Like that really is such a ballsy move for Chucky to do where he could just flat out kill somebody, make everyone aware of it, and then still decide to stay in the room because like, ain't nobody gonna believe that it was me. This dude is an absolute beast and I feel like we're hitting the tipping point where everything is just about to go balls to the wall crazy. But that is everything that went down in episode four of the Chucky TV series. I really wanna know from you guys, what did you think of this episode? What was your favorite moment? Are you still on board with everything going on? Leave me your thoughts and theories and anything you guys think I might've missed. But as always, my name is Chucky Boy. Take care.